uh, doing a kitchen layout based on a floor plan sketch. So first thing I'm going to do is go import the JPEG of the kitchen and then I need to scale it. So we'll go to plan view and we can use our tape measure tool to set a dimension. So I know the distance across here is 136. So using the measurement box I can type that in and then SketchUp will resize the image to the correct scale. So we'll double check it against the countertop. Should be about 36. Looks close. So next thing I want to do is start laying out walls. So I'm kind of just going to trace the image to kind of get a general layout of the kitchen. And I know that's 136, so I'll type that in. I come and put my right wall in. And using a construction line, I can create a four and a half inch offset and trace the back side of the wall. And then we'll take this and create a group so the wall stays together and doesn't hook onto anything. And I will give it some height with the push pull tool. And the next thing I want is a construction line to lay out my bases. And I'll bring those out at 24 inches. So now we're ready to go grab some cabinets. And um, I have some shortcuts on my component browser to the warehouse. And there's a video that shows how to set those up. So it's easier than going to the full web window. So look for a tall filler to get started. And we'll drop that in on the guideline next to the fridge there. And we're going to need a, a toolbar for modifying the dynamic component. So I need to turn that toolbar on. And the pro version has attributes and the free version has options. We just need options. So I can set the width and the height. 95. And then we'll put a filler on the other side. Set its dimensions. And then we'll drag it over to be right next to the wall. We can infer off the point of front of the wall. And then we need to get an oven cabinet. And we'll place it and then uh, need to find the move tool. Uh, move it over next to the filler. There it is. And then I can change the attributes to get the height correct and my opening for my, my double oven. So 95. And then I have an upper lower cutout. And uh, I also have frame width and style width. The next thing we want to put next to this oven cabinet is an in panel. And we have two of them, one next to the oven and one next to the fridge. So we'll drop the first one in, give it its size. And now we just need to position it next to the cabinet. It's a little deeper. Just need to drag it to the back of the cabinet if I get to snap. So now it should come out flush with the front of the doors. So we'll create a copy of it. And then, uh, so I control and I get a copy of it. And then I'll move it over 48 inches because that's the opening between the panels in which I'll put two uh, drawer bases in there. We'll go to a different library on the warehouse for drawer bases. Again, there's a video that shows how to set these shortcuts up. So find so we're going to drop it in on the guideline and then move it next to the, the end panel. We'll change our dimensions before we create a copy of it. So 
just use the move copy command and create another cabinet. Now we want to create a, a wall cabinet, actually two wall cabinets, and they're the flip-up doors, so we'll go get it, uh, one of those from the warehouse. And we're going to place it at the top of these end panels, and we'll get this back corner to drop onto the end panel, if I can make it do it. I guess not. Sometimes we have to actually go to x-ray mode, and that allows better snapping. So there, now it went. Turn it back. So now we'll change the attributes. And this is going to be a glass door cabinet, so we'll change the size. And then I'm going to change the door type to a flat panel, which at this point is just a wood flat panel, but we can then turn it to glass and finish the case interior. Uh, it looks too tall, so let's see. Oh, 20 inches probably. So before we create a copy, we're going to go and apply a material to that door panel. And move it down. So select the glass. And then I need to highlight or select that panel. So I kind of drill through the assemblies until I get just to the panel by clicking inside. Then I can apply the material. Now we have a glass door, and we're going to use the move copy command and move it a copy down 20 inches. So we have our two cabinets. Now getting back to the materials, uh, right now there's just a few materials in, but the dynamic components actually are programmed to use a swatch that's in the library or the warehouse. And if we just drag that in, now we have some predefined materials that all begin with SD. And they represent the face of the cabinets and face of the doors. We can give them a bitmap image. So in this case, I'm doing face case. So the case will have this walnut, walnut. And then we'll pick face door. And then we'll do the edges, edge of case and edge of door. Apply the same bitmap. And these are just Wilson art laminate wood grain colors. And you can use different colors, which works well for like institutional schools and things where you have blue doors and black edge banding. So now we have all these materials defined. The cabinets actually won't take on the materials until they're redrawn. So we're going to use a sketch data plugin to redraw all the components. Anything that's new dropped will take on those materials, but anything that was pre-existing needs to be refreshed. So now they have the materials. The next plugin is we're going to replace the the door pulls. So you can right click on it and pick a different one. And then we can browse and find uh, the door pull we want to use. Oh, there's still in seven. So we have some sample pulls. We're going to find something more contemporary. Let's see. Pick that pull. Now it'll update all the wall cabinets. So we should see anything that's designated as a a wall cabinet pull will be have that new look. So we'll do the same thing on the drawer fronts. And the reason they're different is that way you can put a perhaps a, a knob on your wall doors and a pull on your base doors. So we'll replace it. We're going to go and locate that same SKP file or component. So now all the pulls on the drawer fronts should be replaced too. So the next thing I want to do is go get the appliances, the oven. So we need another toolbar that's the Google Warehouse. So we'll search for our oven by clicking that little icon, find one that works. And appliances can take a little bit of time to get placed and just right. So I'll drop the oven in and then pause the video and put my fridge in and then come back with a, the finished elevation. So we'll download the model. So I'm going to pause it now and drop the other stuff. So now I've put the fridge in and I've put the oven in the right spot and applied uh, panels on the doors, put another cabinet, and I also applied a light strip across the top. Thank you for watching. Oh, and a countertop. Thanks for watching the video.